Over the next 15 minutes, I will try to give you a very brief overview of what is epilepsy. And let's call it Epilepsy 101. So the way a neurologist diagnoses epilepsy is by clinical history and obviously CT scans, MRIs and EEGs are all very useful in helping with the diagnosis. The diagnosis is made by the clinical history, by what the patient and the family describes to us and then obviously the other investigations are trying to identify what kind of epilepsy a person has trying to rule out anything that can be progressive, trying to identify the classification of seizures so that you can choose the best medication that is available. So when we talk about epilepsy, we are talking about the tendency, so it's a tendency to have recurrent recurrent, unprovoked seizures. So question, what is epilepsy? Epilepsy is the tendency to have recurrent, unprovoked seizures. So if somebody just has a single seizure, we do not call it epilepsy. If in clinical practice, if somebody has two or more seizures, then we consider the diagnosis of epilepsy. What does the term unprovoked means? So let's talk about it. So the term unprovoked basically means that there is no acute insult that caused a seizure. Let's say somebody has a serious head injury, so there is a Okay, let me just fix my pen here, which is not working. So someone has a head injury. Head injury. And a lot of bleeding in the brain. And that leads to a seizure. That leads to a seizure. Would this be a provoked seizure or an unprovoked seizure? The answer is, there was a head injury that led to the seizure at the time of the head injury. So this is a provoked seizure. Now let's suppose that, okay, now let's suppose that this patient who had the head injury does not have a seizure immediately. The blood resolves and the patient is discharged home. Two years later, so two, two years later, patient begins having seizures. Now the head injury was two years ago and there was no seizure at the time but the seizures begin two years later. This would be, although the cause of the seizures is head injury, could be head injury, these seizures will be considered unprovoked. So when we talk about the term provoked and unprovoked, we are basically implying any kind of an insult, any kind of an injury that immediately, acutely leads to seizures, we call it a provoked insult. If it is remote after the insult, so someone has meningitis and seizures, mm -hmm. has seizures right away, you can consider it as provoked seizures. But if someone has meningitis as a child, and they begin having seizures as an adult, you can think of, think of those as an unprovoked seizure, but the cause of the seizure would still be meningitis. So when defining epilepsy, yeah, so when defining epilepsy, we are talking about recurrent, so seizures have to be more than once, recurrent, So those are two R's, okay, R-E-C-U-R-R-E-N-T, recurrent, unprovoked, unprovoked seizures. Okay, let's circle this so we know this. 
So recurrent unprovoked seizures. So epilepsy is the tendency to have recurrent unprovoked seizures. If somebody has a single seizure, we do not call it we do not necessarily call it epilepsy. Now, another way to put this together is recurrent unprovoked seizures happen if somebody has a tendency to have seizures. So if somebody has a tendency to have seizures, somebody has a tendency, then that person can be diagnosed with epilepsy. What does that mean? Is let's say somebody has a single seizure and you take a CT scan of the head. So let's say I'm not good at drawing. So let's say this is a picture and these are the two halves of the brain. This is the, let's say the right side, this is the left side and on MRI of the brain, you find that there is a big area of scarring in one, on one side. Now the right side of the body controls the left side of uh, the right side of the brain controls the left side of the body and likewise the left side of the brain controls the right side of the body. So if you find an area of scarring on the right side and a seizure that was involved in the left side of the body, you can say that this person has a tendency to have recurrent and provoked seizures. So even with a single seizure, in some instances, you can diagnose epilepsy. Now the other question is, what exactly is a seizure? And let me talk about that. So the question now is, what is a seizure? So what's, what's happening when someone has a seizure, what's happening within the brain? What is a seizure? Now you can think of the brain, so let's say that this is the brain. Let's say this is a rough sketch of a brain, okay? The brain is made of building blocks, made of tiny building blocks that we call neurons. So each neuron has this kind of an appearance. Okay, so you can think of this as a neuron. I'll put it a smiley face so you know, so it appears a little more animated. So this is a neuron. And the two neurons communicate with each other with tiny electrical currents. So this is another neuron. And these two neurons talk to each other with tiny electrical currents. So what kind of electrical currents? When they shake hands, when these neurons shake hands, there is an exchange of different salts. Salts that, are, that have charges, that can have a positive charge or negative charge. And these transfer between neurons, okay? So brain cells talk to each other with electrical currents. A seizure is an abnormal, excessive electrical discharge between these neurons. So first of all, it has to be abnormal and it has to be an excessive electrical discharge. You can think about a seizure as an electrical storm that occurs when these cells are communicating with each other. Just a general question, do you know how many neurons are there in, in a human brain? The approximate estimation is, the approximate estimation is that there are approximately 86 billion so if that is 86 and nine zeros, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's 86 billion, 86 billion neurons in the human brain. And just a single neuron, if it has an abnormal electrical activity, will not even show up on the EEG. So a group of neurons, a large group of neurons, when they are acting or misfiring, they can produce an abnormal electrical discharge, which we call a seizure. Now the brain, different parts of the brain control different functions. So again, trying to draw a brain, there are parts of the brain, there's a part of the brain that's called the occipital lobe, that's at the back of the head, occipital lobe that controls your vision. So if a seizure starts in the occipital lobe, 
a person may start seeing an abnormal vision so they may start seeing sparkling lights they may just see on one side of their vision that they everything just disappears or sometimes people can have hallucinations they, they can have hallucinations uh, related to their vision the frontal part of the brain can control has has control of different motor functions meaning there is part of the brain that controls your hand movement there is a part of the brain that controls your facial movement there is a part of the brain that helps control that helps move your leg and if a seizure starts in that part of the brain then a person can have an abnormal movement on one side of the body there are likewise there are part of the brain that controls your sensations so that controls your sensations and if seizures start in that area that controls your sensations you may experience an episodic abnormal sensation part of the brain is controlled with memory and if that part of the brain is affected a person may start experiencing just deja vu and memories of past things so it all depends what part of the brain is involved and last but not the least you need to know the different types of seizures so let's write it down seizures sorry seizures can be divided into two main groups when seizures let's let me just draw a brain here when seizure starts from one area and then spreads to different areas spreads to different areas you can call it a focal seizure a focal seizure focal seizure so focal seizures start from one area of the brain and may or may not involve the other parts of the brain in comparison you can think of let's draw another figure if the electrical activity of the brain the abnormal electrical activity of the brain involves the two hemispheres of the brain pretty much at the same time does not have to involve each and every part so when the term generalized is used it does not mean it does not really mean that each and every part of the brain is misfiring it just means that the two hemispheres of the brain are simultaneously involved you call it a generalized seizure i'm not going to go into further details so this is generalized so focal seizures start from one focal area of the brain and generalized seizures start involve the two hemispheres pretty much simultaneously so i think that will suffice for an initial introduction to what is epilepsy what is seizures and then we can talk about more details in future lectures thank you very much